Hi everyone, so today I'll be talking about misogyny in the entertainment industry and specifically more of the subcategories of that, but yeah, let's just get right into it. I made that bitch famous is a line in the song Famous by Kanye West. At the time when the song was written, produced, and released to the world, Kanye West was 40 years old and he's talking about 26-year-old Taylor Swift. It all started at the VMAs back when Taylor Swift was 19 accepting her award for best female video for her song You Belong With Me. When Kanye West ran onto the stage, grabbed the mic from her, and interrupted her to praise another artist who was nominated at the time. He capitalized on her special moment to gain further attention for himself. But the feud and the history behind the two doesn't end there. For the music video of the song that I was talking about earlier, um, the singer featured a group of various famous artists and other celebrity figures in a massive bed all in the nude. Obviously, this attracted a lot of attention, but it was extra horrible because most of the female characters had exposed genitals, as pictured here. He horrendously exposed and exploited the young singer, as well as other young women, for his own personal gain and attention, as this music video gained a lot of attention. These two blatant attacks are a few of many, many, many examples in this industry that clearly showcase there's an extreme presence of misogyny and sexism in the entertainment industry. So moving on, it's without a doubt that our society and culture, women are over-sexualized and objectified, especially in art and social media forms, advertisement for capital gain. The phrase coined by many is that sex sells, but what they fail to mention is that they're usually referring to naked women only rather than their male counterpart. So here are a few examples of advertisements that I found. I just look up companies and these are kind of the first things to pop up versus the male counterparts. These are all the same companies, but the ads are so clearly very different. There's barely even an exposed shoulder versus women in near lingerie. So why? Why is this happening? Because in a patriarchal, misogynistic world, the media caters to the male gaze. According to dictionary.com, the male gaze is defined as the assumption in visual and creative arts that the default or desired audience consists of heterosexual males. An inclusion of women in narrative or art should seek to please this audience with the objectification or sexualization of these depicted women. It is an explanation for the lens design in media that centers female objectification for male pleasure and satisfaction. To find examples, you can go shopping. This is the same shirt by the same company, and clearly it's advertised very differently. Or one can log on to TikTok and find videos. I didn't include examples, but there are many videos of young girls, young women, mainly in bikinis, dancing, just having a good time. And it's totally harmless. But if you go into the comment section, you see a lot of comments like this. They looked at me first. Bro, if you're not being subtle, neither am I. The list goes on and on. Here's an example of a video I found when I was scrolling on TikTok, just kind of going through the motions, having remotely big boobs at a college party. This is as far as the video goes. Basically, the video is this young woman staring at the screen. But you go to the comment section, and I was simply appalled. Look at these comments. And this one is what really got me. Your existence is simply a mold of everyone on social media. Your opinions and your sense of humor all stem from others. You are nothing. Women are being blatantly attacked. She didn't even do anything, but all these men are clearly attacking and objectifying her. This is a disgusting and normalized phenomenon in social media and the entertainment industry that perpetuates dangerous lessons, especially for young girls. It enhances the narrative that girls should be using their body parts for attention and overall perpetuates the dangerous idea that women and their bodies are to be exploited, especially in the entertainment industry. So moving on, as I mentioned before, in the case of Taylor Swift, misogyny and sexism is highly prevalent specifically in the music industry as well. For example, according to data recovered from Spotify, based on a sample of 5 million subscribers, male listeners listen to 94.2% male artists. Meaning that male listeners are being selective in their choices and not giving female artists the proper attention they deserve. And if they were even being equal in their listening time, it'd be a clear 50-50 split. However, the above 90% statistic clearly shows that there's an issue at hand here. Moreover, a study revealed that only 22% of popular artists are women, 13% of pop songwriters are women, and only 3% of pop producers are women. These statistics are astounding and disappointing, especially for young fans who look up to these artists or want to have these careers when they're older. Clearly, it is evident that women are disproportionately supported by users, especially those who identify as male and are severely underrepresented. It's like the Taylor, the artist Taylor Swift said in one of her many songs referring to her struggles as a woman in the industry. I'm so sick of running as fast as I can, wondering if I'd get there quicker if I was a man. And this is not the only example. 
There have been so many songs and examples where women are fighting for their attention, trying to voice what they're saying, whether it's blatant like Taylor Swift or with secret messages. Women are not adequately represented or allowed to succeed in the industry and therefore have to work twice as hard for representation. So moving on, these struggles are just as prevalent in the film industry as well. A shocking example from recent years is the film American Hustle recent, released in 2013. As you can see here, it stars Christian Bale, Bradley Cooper, and Amy Adams. All three worked for similar amounts of time, about 45 days filming. Bale and Cooper each earned $2.5 million and commanded 9% of the overall profits, and Amy Adams only earned $1.25 million and 7% of the profits. Though the actors had similar screen times and equal work, there was a half a difference in pay. Moreover, an even more startling general statistic, according to the conversation, is that in 2017, a comparison of the highest paid male actors and female actresses revealed an average salary of $57.4 million for men and only $21.8 million for women. This means that the top female actresses earn 38% as much as the top male actors. And you can clearly see the statistic being displayed here. All the men are in the top categories, whereas the women are on the bottom, showing that men are ne gaining nearly double the pay of women for similar work. However, the sexism and misogyny goes past the screen as well. It's not just limited to this. A startling and really terrifying statistic is that 94% of women working in film have faced sexual assault or harassment. And honestly, this isn't new. There's been a lot of news in recent years about women being assaulted and even worse by these big name actors. And luckily, there's been lots of punishment for these actors, but it's still not enough. It's clear that the workplace for those who identify as female in this field make less money for work and are also in danger just by showing up to their job. These examples show that both on and off the screen, women are treated horrendously and have a much harder time succeeding in the industry. So overall, one of the roots of this issue is the overall pay gap that women are experiencing, specifically in America. According to the New York Women's Foundation, the uncontrolled pay gap is that a woman makes 79 cents for every dollar a man makes, and the controlled wage gap on the right is that a woman makes 98 cents for every dollar a man makes. So you're probably wondering, what does this even mean? Well, the uncontrolled pay gap is between all jobs held by both men and women. So this shows a really starting um, fact that women are inadequately represented in higher paying jobs. Therefore, the gap is wider. Whereas the controlled gap shows that in an equal paying job, let's say CEO, men are gaining just that much more money for the same, same job, equal work, everything. So this is without a doubt a severe issue. This should not be happening. Women should not be discriminated against, paid less, assaulted, or be treated any differently in these jobs for simply being a woman. A woman. Both governmental and societal change needs to be happened, not just for us, but for future generations. And this needs to be enforced that women are not treated unfairly in both the entertainment industry and in life. So thank you for watching. Here's some sources and links. Um, I appreciate it. Thank you.